Why do we have to have a month? The reason why is because it's people like you who don't understand why we really have it. The LGBTQ plus community has over half a calendar year. I don't like the flag. I think it's a piece of idiocy. I don't understand why it changes every bloody week. The gender affirming care movement, Nazi Auschwitz level awful. You shouldn't even be giving that airtime. He says loads of nonsense. Well, you say loads of nonsense. I don't deplatform you. How many men have ovaries? I have no idea, Piers. Peer. I'm no. not in that How situation. Many? No men Peer. have ovaries. Well, a lot of you on this panel believe that there is only one type of woman, which is cisgender women. Are there different it's types of black people? It's not included in the conversation. Or is black just black? Ernest, if I now identify as a black man, am I a black man? Why are you conflating race with gender, Pierce? I'm just it's asking you a question, thing. Ernest. Am I a black man if I say I'm a black man? Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are here again with another video titled, Am I a black man if I say I'm a black man? Pierce Morgan, Pride Debate. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Mothers, fathers, armed forces, veterans, fallen soldiers, women, patron saints all have one thing in common. There is one calendar day per year held in their honour, and quite right too. But it's always been a source of some confusion to me that simply being gay or part of the LGBTQ2 community entitles you to an entire month. I'm, of course, referring to the Holy Month of Pride, which mandates 30 days of revelry in honour of, as I say, the LGBTQIA. My apologies to A's dash 2SL dash plus community. I have no idea what half of that means, but I'm very happy for everyone to lead the lives they want. And admittedly, after reading that aloud, it all makes a lot more sense. Or does it? Clearly, there's a day for every letter, but the serious point here is that this kind of enforced celebration of sexual preferences is, I think, becoming a little bit counterproductive. There are many millions of people, myself included, who couldn't give a damn what you do behind closed doors or, frankly, in front of open doors and would rather not know about it either way. I don't care. Why should they be browbeaten and shamed into thinking they're bigots if they don't go on with enforced month-long celebrations? This is what happened when Adele called out a heckler who reportedly shouted, Pride sucks. What was that? Did you just say Pride sucks? Huh? Did you come to my show and just say that Pride sucks? Are you f stupid? Don't be so ridiculous. You got nothing nice to say, shut up, all right? Charming. Uh, and here's the problem with that uh, for young Adele, who was effing and blinding at some body who paid presumably very good money to be at that concert of hers in Vegas. It turns out the man didn't shout pride sucks at all. He shouted work sucks. To which most people probably would have agreed with him, including judging by the whining that she's been doing since she got the gig in Vegas, Adele. But maybe he's employed by the BMW marketing department. She's been busy fielding complaints this week about another recurring pride problem, corporate hypocrisy. The car maker dutifully changed his logo on social media to reflect the pride rainbow keeping with many thousands of virtue signaling corporations across the Western world. The followers in the Middle East, where homosexuality is commemorated rather differently, got the plain old blue and white. After a backlash, BMW posted, this is an established practice at the BMW Group, which takes into consideration market-specific legal regulations and country-specific cultural aspects. Well, there we have it then. These companies don't care about gay rights. They're not making a stand at all on any principled level. They're just adjusting their virtue signaling to amplify their virtue so they can sell the maximum number of products in any particular country of the world, regardless of what that country actually thinks about things like homosexuality. And as a very unhappy marriage of Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light shows, they will drop the cause like a flaming hot potato if it costs them money or is any kind of backlash. Now, I fully support LGBT rights. I can only remember those four, so my apologies to the rest. I always have. And I don't need a rainbow on my cereal box, credit card, sandwich or beer to prove that. And I certainly don't need it for a month. In a moment, we'll debate all things private tonight's pack, Esther Krakow, James Barr and Ernest Owens. But first, returning to Uncensored is Riley Gaines, whose new book appropriately is titled Swimming Against the Current, Fighting for Common Sense in a World That's Lost Its Mind. Well, Riley, great to have you back on Uncensored. How are you? 
I'm doing great, Piers. Uh, it's great to be back on with you, so thank you. Well, listen, you know, you're one of my, my heroines out there because you fight what's often been a very lonely battle uh, against this kind of woke uh, nonsense that's been happening, certainly in the sport that you uh, were so accomplished in. Um, tell me the premise of the book. Uh, yes, it was a whirlwind uh, to be able to add author to my resume now is, is crazy. Um, but the premise of the book, look, it, of course, a little background on me, what it takes to be an elite athlete, uh, something that I think a lot of the people who are, are ultimately making the decisions, making these rules, don't understand. Uh, more depth and count of what we went through at that national championships in regard to the unfair competition and the locker room. Uh, of course, the silencing that we faced, again, something I don't think a lot of people understand, uh, why so few have been willing to put their, their name and their face to this, uh, how we got here, the trajectory of where we're going, uh, and what we as everyday people, common sense human beings who intuitively know that men and women are different, uh, what we can do to combat this movement. It is extraordinary to see what's happened in sport, but I do think that the woke worm is turning. I am beginning to feel like the silent mass majority are beginning to rise up and say enough of this. This has to be sorted a different way. When you see what's happened in swimming, in sprinting, in any sport that requires uh, a fairness and equality around size and power and speed, which is, of course is determined largely by biological sex. It's why we separate the sexes for the Olympics, for example. Uh, I do feel the tide's turning pardon the pun. Do you feel that? A hundred percent. I feel more hopeful now than I have felt uh, in these past two years since I've taken this stand. I think parents are waking up. I think coaches, female athletes, medical professionals. Uh, I mean, again, I, I think your everyday person who otherwise maybe would have considered themselves apolitical, uh, probably people who thought this never would impact them, their families, they're understanding now that no one is immune to this movement. Uh, it's infiltrated into all levels, whether that's corporate America, whether that's academia, uh, of course, within our government, our media, what have you. And they're understanding it's up to us uh, as everyday people to call out the hypocrisy and push back. So, yeah, I agree. I, I feel very hopeful at this point in time. What do you feel about things like Pride Month? I mean, I just, I, like I say, I support the LGBT community, always have done. But I find this whole idea of a whole month being set aside for celebrating pride. I'm like, why? Why do we give one day to veterans of world wars and a month to gay people, for example? No, no um, harm intended on Mr. Barr here. I'm sure we'll be responding in kind to. But I have no issue with James and his sexuality. Thank you. But why do I have to celebrate it for also, a month? I should say no issue with yours, Piers. Well, yeah, but but I, I would rather you didn't ram it down my throat all the time. There's okay. no danger of that happening. But I, I just wanted to... <laughs> But to be clear, there's no straight month, right? There's no celebration of my sexuality uh, or ramming of anything about people's throats. <laughs> um, but, but Riley, before we all lose the plot here, um, how do you feel about enforced virtue signaling, where if you don't go along with this, then you're kind of lambasted as a bigot? We see it in all sorts of different ways. I remember with the George Floyd uh, murder happened, a horrific thing, which I wrote uh, and spoke about a lot, about how horrific it was and it had to affect real change, which it did. But that day when everyone was told to do a black square on their Instagram for a day, and I just didn't want to do it. And I instead posted a picture of myself in my local park with a bottle of rosé and got completely annihilated by people who felt this meant I must therefore be a racist. And I was like, no. I spent all morning, actually, debating this on television. I wrote a column about it, and then I fancied a glass of... Rosé, and I fancied exercising my free speech rights to post a picture of said bottle of rosé on my Instagram. And yet I literally had my kids ring me, my sons, who were being bombarded with abuse. What is your father doing? Why isn't he doing the black square? And I feel the same about the backlash that comes with things like Pride Month. It's like if you don't go along with all this, somehow you must be homophobic, which I'm not. Your thoughts? Right. No, I, I totally agree. Uh, I just want to know what posting a black square on Instagram, how that helps quite literally anybody. Um, and yeah, to your point, Piers, look, the, the pride movement, it's not just one day. It's not just one month. Uh, the LGBTQ plus community has over half a calendar year in days. There's Trans Visibility Day. There's Asexual Awareness Day. There's Gender Fluid Day. I mean, I can't even keep up. 
Uh, and yeah, it's not even about that these days exist or that they're divisive, I think, in their true nature. The problem is, just as you said, uh, the backlash, the risk, the threats that we face if we don't participate or even if we dare to question this. And again, it's in every single realm of society. Uh, this has seemingly overtaken the public square. And I think uh, the same sentiment you had, what people do behind closed doors, mm -hmm. by all means, that's the beauty of living in America, in mm -hmm. my case. That's the beauty of, of where we live. Of course. But I don't want it to cost my taxpayer dollars, uh, and I don't want to be forced to to support this. Because as a Christian, um, I mean, I, I, I don't <laughs> support it. But that doesn't mean I want to infringe on someone else's right, just as I don't want my rights right. as a woman in Japan. Well, let me play a clip before we come to the rest of the pack. This is Jordan Peterson who's gotten to a furore over his video about pride, where he says a sexually narcissistic movement headed for a fall because it's been taken over by the radical trans lobby. Let's take a look. There is a real tinge of narcissism, sexual narcissism, the trans pushing, gender affirming butchers and liars primarily target young people whose most likely outcome on the sexual front is homosexuality. I don't like the flag. I think it's a piece of idiocy. I don't understand why it changes every bloody week. And I think the surgery, the gender affirming care movement, I think it is Nazi Auschwitz level awful. Mr. Barr. What on earth is that closeted gay man wearing? That is an abomination. <laughs> that is a crazy load of absolute bullshit. I'm sorry, that is insane. How dare he say that about Auschwitz? Gay people were killed alongside Jewish people and disabled people in the Holocaust. That is disgusting, Piers. That is disgusting. You shouldn't even be giving that airtime. Well, he's a, he's a very famous guy. Yeah, but we just... shouldn't be listening to what he thinks. I mean, he says loads of nonsense. Well, you say loads of nonsense. I don't de-platform you. No, I mean, I, I, I do, I do I agree with that. you. I agree with you, James. Wow. Uh, that, you know, drawing likeness to, to Nazis and Auschwitz is a bit extreme. However, he does make a valid point that... Well, he was talking that, specifically that about, about, about the, the... the butchery of gender-affirming care. That's what he was talking there is, about. There, I'm sorry, there is, no, there is nothing positive about basically castrating people and chopping off their breasts and their sexual organs to try and affirm anything other than some deep psychological distress. And yeah. I think that's the point he should have made instead of comparing it to Auschwitz, because it doesn't always have to be compared to Auschwitz. Everything that's a very touching been, topic. Everything that's been said here so far, I could write an essay about it. I have so much to say. And it's difficult to just respond to literally all of the insane things that have been coming out of your mouths over the last 10 minutes, to be what honest. What was insane it would about anything Riley said? I do find behind closed Bang doors on, what was quite insane about anything Riley said? This is what Riley Listen, means. can I just Hang reply on. to Esther first? You because can. I don't want to just Everything Riley, Riley is... ever says, people like you go, it's insane. I want no. to say, what is it she said that's insane? It's a great question. Do you want to move on? No, I think what she said about how she doesn't agree with it but whilst also saying, Do you oh, respect I don't... Well, that's not really she supportive, is it? She doesn't have to agree it? with you. It's not supportive. She doesn't well, why does, have well, to Why does everyone need to support They don't, they don't. They don't. don't. But let me just try and make one single point, it's if I can. It's not compulsory to support make anybody. It's not, it's not that these concerns that Riley raises uh, aren't important or that women's safety isn't important. All of that is important. And what happened to Riley, it's an important story that we should listen to. Everyone should. And the left shouldn't be attacking you for that. That literally shouldn't happen. No one should be attacking anyone. Okay. We should listen uh -huh. with empathy. Yes. But I think the issue occurs when we look at abuse rates in America for women, right? It's one in three women that are abused by men in America. You haven't commented on that. You haven't commented on abortion. You haven't commented on so many things. Trump discussing that it's okay to grab a woman's oh. pussy. You don't make comments on those issues. And those issues are affecting more women than a trans woman in a, in a changing room because there aren't that many. There's only 70, 700,000 trans women in America. So because they Riley- They can't all be abusing women. That would be insane. Have, they're so busy. Because, all right, I'll let Riley but, answer that herself. There's a but, reason, but there's a reason why. There, there's honest. a reason why for this though. The truth of the matter is, is that, thank you. The, the truth of the matter is, is that there's always this conversation about the woke group, the woke group, the, the mm. far left group that's pushing an agenda, but we gotta be real about the people like her who's pushing a far right agenda that oftentimes is She's fixated on right. coming after people of color, what are you coming talking after about queer far people, right. and also pushing an agenda that excludes. Ernest, well, when the did same way that I'm like, what far right? You don't even know what woke means. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, that's fine. Right? That's it's fine. Um, can it's I just ask you a question? Can I just ask you a question? And that's fine. Hold on, Ernest. Right? Can I ask you a question just to clarify because I'm none the wiser? Define sure. far right. What's the definition of far right? 
Far right are people that are pushing homophobic, transphobic views, mis misprescribing, misdefining terms such as woke. None of you all seem to really know what woke means, but you like to use it. I wrote a book about it. That's not a so definition. If you're use woke, I literally wrote a book about it. people you disagree with. I'm going to call you all far right, far -right people conservatives. People you Wait, see, like, you, okay, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, it's the same thing with left. Anybody, anybody, anybody you don't agree with, you call woke. So if if you're gonna call anyone you don't agree with woke or woke extreme or lefty, <laughs> yeah, literally, I don't even know what that word means. I'm gonna call you Let all me say that. something. It's the past term. You say that I'm a far right homophobe. My response to that is saying that men can identify as women. And lesbians who don't want to date these men who identify as women, that is homophobic. You are using lesbians as your political pawn, and that's sick. You've just, lesbians don't want this Riley, you've just either. come out with that right. from nowhere. So why are you that calling a political anywhere, pawn? That, that wasn't why part are you of this discussion. A political Where's that come from? Because he called me a homophobe, and I'm sitting here saying I'm fighting for well, the sex-based rights of lesbians, We of get women. emotional about this, and we're right to, get because about we're discussing things. our rights. How, 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 do you conflate, how do you conflate... Hang on, don't, how do you please conflate don't talk over each other. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no, Ernest, for Ernest, hang on. Don't talk over each other, because otherwise we can't hear what's going on. Yes. You see, James, it's interesting, because you showed zero support for Riley's That's campaign. That's not actually what happened. I just no, no, showed some no, support. No, no, I'm talking about her campaign. You want to campaign about everything, but she's actually chosen the one that has directly impacted no, her life. No, my question is, no, hang why on. aren't you I haven't asked you the question. too? Well, let's you... ask Riley if she I'm is about concerned to about that. She hasn't been you. hit by a man, James. Um, no, no, I'm going to come to that, but she's not here to talk about abuse of women. She's talking about the infringement on women's rights to fairness and equality in women's sport, which she herself has personally suffered from, right? Now, you have shown zero support for That's any not women true. like Riley Gaines. That's not true. I just said it's an important you literally story. Said in sport... I literally said it's an important story that Sorry, we need to listen to. Last week, you That's said... That's what I said. It... Last week... Here's, you literally... I literally just said, two minutes ago, it's an important I may story. Say, if I may remind you, to. I know a week is a long time in James Barr's memory lapse. But, but it was last... over a week because you've La... been on holiday. Last week, I had three days off. Last week, you said that the Olympics should be gender neutral. Well, I still think it would solve a lot of problems. It would solve zero problems. It would solve so and that many shows, problems. And that my point... And well, I'm not a sports Let commentator. Bring Riley. I don't know sport. Oh, but come I'm telling on, you, James. I think we should listen to Riley's story. But my issue is not the story or the concern. My issue is that it's the only concern. And then when we drill it down... It's literally her say, campaign. What do you think about abortion rights in America? What do you think about what Trump says? You don't want to comment on what it. What do you well, think well, about well, the well, Uyghur well, Muslims well, in China? Yeah, well, exactly. Maybe that's, that's her what truth. Have you, what have you tweeted about the Uyghur Muslims? You haven't. About that. So you're a bloody no, hypocrite. So I'm quiet. not a hypocrite, but I'm okay, saying... So, so not so everyone that's why every I'm trying to explain why the left here. get upset. Right, it's let because me, we're looking at it and going, the only thing you're bringing up is... Let me bring in Riley. Let's try and get some order here. This is exactly my... Ernest, wait a moment, please. The hypocrisy is... Wait a moment, Ernest. Riley, here's my point. We've just seen right there the hypocrisy. It's not hypocrisy. Right there. Right? I'm is trying that, to explain. When it. I say to James Barr, why don't you talk about Uyghur Muslims' oppression? Well, why, why should don't you I? Why talk about Uyghur Muslims? Why should I? I do. Right. Why should I? He doesn't, but he wants you to talk about all no, these other issues. No, I don't. Issues. I am trying to explain why we get upset. It's because There's... we look at it and we go, why is JK Rowling only concerned about this one thing? She's not she's only really concerned, concerned about, about that. She tweets about a lot of stuff. Let me bring in Riley. You'd be very patient listening to this. I think it's entirely this. disingenuous to say that this is the only issue that I care about. Uh, I spend majority of my time advocating for this issue, but that's not to say that I don't speak on other issues. Uh, a big campaign uh, of mine and what I am advocating for now is women in prisons, uh, women who are uh, most of the time victims of domestic assault, domestic abuse, uh, to which your point, I will say any form of sexual violence, any form of domestic violence that women face is entirely wrong and should be denounced, and those who commit it should be criminalized. Um, but a large push right now is for fighting for these women in prisons, incarcerated women. Uh, they still deserve sex-based protections and their rights too. But it always comes uh, back to this one the, issue, which only affects, not. like, which affects less women than the major. Does, does, does that make it? Does that no, make it? it doesn't make it wrong. And it's okay that that's wrong. Right, let me bring you. Let me bring you. All right. Why we get upset. Right. Don't talk over each other, Ernest. Right. Yes. The point I'm making is that that's exactly the point I was trying to make earlier, is that while she cares about other issues that are very important, and I agree with her on, on several of those issues, she's being platformed only when it comes to particular issues that are divisive, that are transphobic, that, that do not They're show not the full nuance of earnest. her explored interest. It's not so transphobic it to think six the foot four inch biological males why is should this not be competing against women. With Pride Month. 
Why, why is, but why is this being conflated with Pride Month, Pierre? Why? It's something why conflated. Why is she here talking about... Why is she in the conversation around Pride Month? Uh, she wasn't. She was in a conversation about why? her book, which then led to a conversation right. about it's Pride a, no, Month. No, but she's talking... But she's also because in a Pride conversation about Pride Month. Why is there person? a conflation there? Pride Month has... Pride Month affects Oh, because every that's... The, because it goes aligned with your far-right agenda. Why that's do why I, you're bothered. She's not far-right. That's the issue that we're talking about the panel. I think it's talking about Ernest, let me ask you. Ernest, Ernest, why do we have to have... I want to ask Ernest a question. Why do we have to have a month of pride? Go ahead. Why? Because the reason why is because it's people like you who don't understand why we really have it. It's not really about no, sexuality. It's so about allowing people explain who are me. like myself, who don't feel like they're being represented or being protected in a world and a society where people like Riley gets a platform to spew misinformation. What's, what's the misinformation? Representation What's is the misinformation? Important. Ernest. The misinformation about gender. Tell me like one thing she said. Like Tell me one thing she said that's wrong. Weaponizing transgender people. Tell me as one an thing on she women. said, Ernest. That's that wrong. That is just the biggest. Ernest. And I just said that. Ernest. And I just no, said no. it. No, no. I think it's Say, the vibe. I want you right? to you correct one thing she said that was wrong. Can you hear? Yeah. Answer me. <laughs> so, transgender people's existence does not threaten the existence of women. No, no one has said that. Are Nobody said that. But it is the vibe, though, isn't it? Hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. That is the vibe no, of this whole thing. No, no, no. It is, no. though. That's definitely I'm the vibe. I'm sorry. I'd say that's the vibe of your whole Ernest, channel, actually. Ernest, Ernest, Ernest. Nobody has ever that's said that. That's the vibe. That. No one said that. It's the vibe. I support trans Ask rights, defense, and equality. Do you believe that, though? We, you after, are, no, you I'm cannot not think of a single thing. After that. All right, I'm asking you one more time. Tell me one thing Ask Riley after. Gaines has said, this far-right lunatic who's lying, apparently. Tell me one thing she said that is actually factually untrue. Like I said before, <laughs> trying to position... You can't answer, can and you? over-index transgender people in sports. I said it again. Over-indexing the role of okay, transgender people in sports as if it poses a threat to cisgender women. Cisgender? That's, that's I've got a question for you then, Ernest. Why aren't we seeing women infiltrate Go into ahead. men's sports? Yeah, of course we're not, because they can't compete. You don't see any trans if, if men going into men's sport, do you? Because they can't, they'd lose. And I don't... Ernest, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out what, are you, there what are. are you trying to say? There aren't. There are I'm no pretty, trans I'm men competing at a high level in men's sport. Women. It doesn't happen. No, it doesn't trans exist. women are not No, women. I want to hear this. She men. does not believe that transgender women are women. Because they're not. Right. And they're they're not, not. For the love of God. I don't think we should get into they that. They are not. They're not. The transphobia is stop, here. Please stop I, abusing women by calling us cisgender. Cis women are just women, right? Anything else so you can see how she said abusing women? So she does not consider trans women women. You know where this takes you, Ernest? And she abusing. These are far... These are far... These are far right talking points. Biological reality. Oh, yes. you know where this, where is that, is my, that it? Here's where hey, this Ernest, might... Hang on, I'm a trans hang on. Then you are a misogynist. And yeah, you're exactly. complaining it's, it's, with Pride Month. That's complete nonsense. The Ovarian Cancer UK. So defending trans women Ernest, and defending women Ernest, keep quiet for a moment. Ernest, a please stop talking. I'm reading something. I love you, Ernest. The Ovarian Cancer UK tweeted today. Love you, too. Did you know that anyone <laughs> with ovaries, regardless of gender identity, can be at risk for ovarian cancer? Let's raise awareness by asking... Can men get ovarian cancer? Uh, James Barr, men can't get ovarian cancer because men don't have ovaries. What is a leading you... cancer charity doing asking this stupid question? What are you doing attacking a charity? Uh, because I think that is attacking women. Why are you attacking a charity? Well, I'll tell you why. Because a woman then actually messaged me who has you're, terminal you're ovarian about... cancer, who says the idea of being on a tiny ward with somebody identifying as a woman but next to her who actually has a penis and is a man, right, fills her with utter horror. Because of all the nonsense her last and fear-mongering that this platform is creating. No, she's a woman, Listen doesn't want to me. be around men. Listen right. to me. When she's dying. Pierce. Listen to me. Pierce. In an ovarian Pierce. Pierce. cancer. If I, question, decide to drink, if I decide to drink I oat milk, that doesn't mean that actual milk is no longer... is, is being threatened, OK? He's and in this case, this charity want to raise He's awareness about maybe 1%, one percent, if that, of people that could suffer from ovarian cancer. So how many aren't... men... OK, let me ask you. How many men have ovaries? I have no idea, Piers. Pierce. I'm no. not in that how many? situation. How many? But they Hold put it in their tweet, if you read it properly, it actually says No men. No men. No men have ovaries. Well, according to a charity that work in this field... No. 
They do. Men so have why don't you ovaries. Take up with the charity? No women have penises. Well, according to the charity, who I think probably know more about ovaries right. than you do, because they clearly you don't. are a woman, Piers. They Neither clearly am I. don't. Sorry, look, you know so much about women, your wife took a two-week break from you, so I don't know why we're listening to you talking what? about women constantly. Can we just get back to the fact that they are trying to help someone? My That's wife did what, did you say? Didn't you have a sabbatical from each other? It was actually a lot longer than two weeks. <laughs> was it? Yeah. How I recommend it? it warmly. But I wouldn't okay. buy one from you. Um, <laughs> let me bring Riley back in. Riley, oh, this is the goodness. trouble. When you ask it's specific questions, I only stop shouting. Everybody, uh, the conversation is clear. Yes, go on, oh, go okay. on, Ernest. So I got to be quiet. But go on, Ernest. The, the, in a nutshell, the, the larger point I'm making here is that the reason why I'm saying transphobia is because it's clear on this panel that you all, a lot of you on this panel, believe that there is only one type of woman, which is cisgender women. And anyone else does not prescribe to that definition for you all. No. And in my what, opinion, no, no. that is transphobic. Here's what you I believe. You only believe that Let cisgender answer, women Ernest. are women, and everyone okay, else are different is not included people? in the conversation. Or is black just black? It's called this. It's called uh, that, that, that's because you don't know that. it's because Caribbean, black is just Jamaican. black. Just like there is no such thing as cisgender and transgender. There are just women. You can you can embellish your titles whatever you want. Why are you complaining about gender? Let me ask you this, Ernest. Let me ask you this. Why are you complaining about gender? Hang on, hang on. Don't all shout, Ernest. Let me ask you this. If I now identify as a black man, am I a black man? Why are you conflating race with gender? I'm just asking you a question, Ernest. That's intellectually dishonest. If intellectually I identify... That's intellectually dishonest. Maybe, but it's a question you don't want to answer, isn't it? If, if, if self-identity is limitless... Because if race is not the same as gender. I'm now a black man called Ernest. Because race am is I, not the same as gender. Am I a black man if I say I'm a black man? Say it again. Am I a black man Listen, if I say I'm a black you man? You can be... Am I? No, because okay. you're a white man because Thank it's you. race. So you don't because respect race my right to identify as a black man, do you? Do you think it's ridiculous? You can identify as a black man. You can identify as a black man, Pierce, but I know you lean on white privilege more than anything else. OK. So just to be clear, you, wanted to. you wouldn't respect my so right to identify as a... Wow. You, don't, you don't respect my right to identify as a black man. In fact, you think it's ridiculous, don't you, Ernest? You could. You, you, Pierce, you could if you wanted to. And yeah. the reality is would that you respect society, me, a white Ernest? man like you, would you can identify me? as black um, would you and, respect not, and, me and not and be harmed to me as in the same man. way that a transgender person would. Yeah. Would you respect me and refer to me Say as a black again? man? Would you respect me and refer to me as a black man? Yes or no? No. Thank you, Ernest. OK, let's move on to uh, something else. This is... Uh, the point is no, so... No, no, Ernest, you like, had your chance. You had your chance. Ernest, you had your chance. Obviously, on, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't accept it because I'm not black. You didn't even post a black square. I'm not yes. a black man. Uh, but you know you, what? You let's move on. Let's move on to some you other don't lunatics. You want to be a black um, man, Pierce. Let's you don't move don't on want to... to be black. All right, calm down, no. Ernest. Let's move on to Ali What's Baldwin. You know, I want to be black tears. I want to move on to Ali Baldwin and one of the most grotesque promo videos, I think, in reality TV history. Take a look. Hi, I'm Ilaria Baldwin. And I'm Alec Baldwin. And we have an announcement to make. Good God, no. No, definitely not. We're done having kids. This is about our show. We're inviting you into our home to experience the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the wild, and the crazy. We're saying we are the Baldwin. We are the Baldwin. No, we are the Baldwins. We all got to say so I have two thoughts to... We're going to be quick on this debate. I have two thoughts about this, uh, Esther. One is, I thought these two really were concerned about privacy. Yeah. And here they are now putting cameras onto their entire family 24-7 for a reality show. And secondly, he is about to take part in a criminal trial about the fact that he shot a gun at a woman who then died. Yeah. Alina I, I, Hutchins. I, I, I can't I, I just think... On every level, this is grotesque, isn't it? It's image uh, Yes. It's, Hang it's, on, it's, I can't think of anything worse than watching something about Alec Baldwin and his excessively fertile wife. I, I just... With I, the dodgy accent. Oh, my God. And the nine... I can't even... Rem I, I don't... I couldn't remember nine kids' names. Um, but this this just shows how in poor taste this man lives his life. To be to be going through a criminal trial and then trying to open mm. the doors to his his, I don't know, Manchester United-sized family life. It's just ridiculous. Nine, nine children, I think. Alec oh, my Baldwin. God. Sounds very familiar. I think Alec Baldwin maybe needs to shoot a few more Sounds blanks. Sounds very familiar. Oh, my God. Shooting yeah. blanks would have been a good idea. Yeah. Riley, what do you make of this? No, I agree. Uh, me watching that, I'm like, this is a guy who attacked the media relentlessly for invading his privacy. And now he's putting his family 
and his children on full display. Uh, right. And quite honestly, like Esther said, I can't imagine anyone who would want to watch this. Well, so I think, you know, we ask ourselves, is this image repair? Is this a money grab? I don't know. Yeah. We're on the verge of something historic here because if Ernest Owens can find it in himself to agree, we have a united panel. Ernest, Alec Baldwin. I agree. Hey! <laughs> Happy Pride, Pride Month, month everyone. <laughs> Ernest, uh, I'm glad we finally found a, a, a point of agreement. Thank you to my panel. Riley, congrats for the book. It's a great read. <laughs> you remain one of my heroines. Keep fighting. Riley, not, for camp not blow up, by the way. Too. You are looking... Right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, everyone appears on Wait, the show. Wait, what did you say? Sorry. The glow up. We love the glow You've up. You've had a glow up. We everyone who appears up. on oh, Piers thank Morgan. You. Thank you, thank you. Everyone who appears on Uncensored is a natural glow up, with one exception, James Barr. Why have I not got a glow up? I don't know, mate. You tell me. <laughs> Looking very de-glowed. Uh, but thank you all to my panel, and thank you, Riley. Uh, and good luck with the Thanks, book. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Good Happy Pride Month, Riley. Oh, okay. thank you. And you. Yeah. As if you haven't been told enough. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think it should be all year round, every day. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> every oh, day Lord. I'm proud of James oh, Barr. No, no, absolutely not. Like straight no, fight, no. Yeah. I'll never leave my house. Yeah, and then we'll have straight week. Can you imagine the hell that we're done? I would love it. I need a rest. If I actually <laughs> I need to rest. organize straight week. Straight week, straight week, straight week, straight straight week, straight week for middle-aged white guys like me. Can you imagine? 11 months of the week. I thought you were a black guy. No, 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 you're a middle-aged black guy now. Ernest Edward explode. Anyway, thank you all very much. We'll leave it there. Wow. What an interesting debate. We can tell this was really, really, really heated. Just like the title goes, am I a black man if I say I'm a black man? Piers Morgan, a pride debate. We can tell this was really heated. To some extent, I, I agreed with some of the facts they stated. And to some extent, I also disagree with some of the facts. Just like Piers Morgan have stated, setting outside our uh, immunes to celebrate LGBTQ, to celebrate the Qs, to celebrate the gay, I feel that is totally unacceptable. Uh, you can talk about setting aside a day, setting aside maybe two days, three days, but setting aside a whole month just to celebrate uh, the LGBT community, I feel that is totally unacceptable. And they also debate about some certain topic, men participating uh, in women's sports and women participating in men's sports. I feel that uh, that shouldn't be accepted because I believe if a man is going to participate in, in women's sports, uh, there's high chance of the man winning the competition as compared to the woman. We all understand this because of uh, the nature and the way uh, the body, the structure of the man have been set as compared, as compared to the woman. So I believe a man shouldn't be allowed uh, in, uh, in women's sports because if the man actually wants to compete and feel proud of it, he can as well go and compete uh, in men's sports. We understand the fact that uh, they are transitioning from being a man to a woman Transition, uh, transitioning from being a man to woman, we understand that. So, if you are a man and you are saying you are you are not a woman, I see no reason why you should be competing in women's sports. I see no reason why you want uh people the people should accept you and give you the same treatment women are getting. I see no reason why that should be allowed. So the same reason you see a lot of women that transition, a lot of women that transition into 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 a man, it's very difficult for you to see them participating in men's sports because they know it's very difficult for them to uh, win. It's very difficult for them to win in men's sports. So I believe the same thing should be applied to uh, women's sports. If you are transitioning, if you are transitioning from being a, a man into a woman, I believe you should be participating in men's sports rather than participating in women's sports because that would be unfair. That would be unfair to the women. Because we all know how the body system of a man is built as compared to a woman, just most especially in sports like uh, football, sports like weightlifting. We all know that men tend to have more muscles as compared to the men. So it will be something very easy. A man can easily win in such sports. And they also talk about a man being, uh, a man being placed uh, in women's prison 
because uh, he, he, he claimed he has transitioned into a woman. And at the end of the day, when, he, uh, when uh, he's being placed into uh, a woman prison, he end up molesting the women. So I feel that is totally, that is totally unacceptable. I understand the fact that uh, the belief they are suffering from uh, gender dysphoria and they also believe that a woman's body has been trapped in them. So they came to a conclusion that uh, they, 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 they are women, they are not men, based on that conclusion. I totally believe that a lot of those people are suffering from mental delusion because what they perceive to be truth is not actually truth. And I, for one, I believe instead of us trying to reason with them, instead of us trying to feel pity for them, the only thing we can do for them is to liberate. Is to, uh, the only thing we can do for them is to liberate them by telling the truth. Because what they perceive to be truth is not actually the truth. And the black guy in question, I don't know why he, he was attacking the lady. He was attacking the lady and... The point she he kept on attacking the lady about, I don't believe the lady actually said anything like that. And I love the fact that Pierce Morgan asked him uh, a simple question that can he identify as a white? Can he identify as a black? Because uh, uh, can he identify as a black? And he wasn't able to answer that question. Uh, Pierce Morgan also went ahead by asking him, he, uh, he asked him that is he going to accept him as a black just because he identify himself as a black and he was laughing by what Pierce Morgan said and he also gave an answer that he's not going to accept Pierce Morgan as a black so I feel the same thing applied to uh the same thing applied to uh, gender you can identify yourself as a woman and you expect everyone to accept you as a woman ah uh, because if I'm seeing you as a man I know what I'm seeing in front of me that I'm seeing a man so you can't force me to accept the fact that you are you are you are a woman. You can identify with whatever you want to identify with, but you are not going to force me to accept the fact that you are a woman when I know you are a man. Wow. So I've really learned a lot just by listening to uh, Pierce Morgan and every one of the speaker. So I would also like to hear your com comments. Keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day.